Hello. Uh, forgive my little cowlick there. Uh, this is Chris Helton of the Dorkland blog, and I'm recording today what I hope to be one of the uh, first of a semi-regular uh, video blog that we're going to do for the Dorkland blog. Um, there's going to be, down in the uh, text below, uh, some links to things that I'll talk about throughout the um, throughout this post. So, um, first off, I'm going to talk about a few of the games that have sort of filtered through the offices of the Dorkland blog over the last uh, few weeks, and um, it's, it's, it's been a busy time. Um, some of these are new, some of these are a little older, and um, most of them are things that I'm going to be covering either uh, on the blog or uh, over at uh, the Bleeding Cool website. So uh, let's start with Octon Cthulhu. Um, as you can see here, we have the, inve the Investigator's Book and the Player's Book. Um, this has uh, the rules for um, Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu as well as Savage Worlds in them. Um, I haven't had as much of a chance to get through it as I would like, mostly because so much stuff has been coming through lately. Um, Octon Cthulhu, for those who probably remember, was launched with a very successful Kickstarter from um, Modifius Press. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, and I'm very sorry to uh, Chris Birch if uh, I am. Um, I'm sure he will correct me. Uh, they're really high quality books. Um, Full color, really nice illustrations, some very cool maps, and it is um, it goes into the Secret War, which is um, fighting Cthulhu during uh, World War II, which would probably be of uh, interest to uh, fans of Tim Powers. Um, his book Declare was sort of a, it was a little later period, but you know common enough of a ground, so if you like that, you you probably would uh, find uh, Acton Cthulhu to be pretty good. Um, similar, or not similar, uh, also from Modifus, I'm going to pronounce it two different ways, so one of them at least will be um, the correct one. Um, in conjunction with Mindjammer Press is the weighty tome of, I'm getting used to putting things for the camera. This is uh, Mind Jammer, the role-playing game. Fate-powered, uh, Fate-core. As you can see, it is a rather... It does have a, a bound bookmark, which is really cool. But, as you can see, it is a rather weighty book, um, which, for some, is kind of a negative. But, uh, there's a lot of stuff that is uh, above and beyond... Um, just the the game system itself in this book. There's a lot of setting material. There's a lot of you know how to run this sort of game material. Um, there's a lot of you know worked examples. It's a baseline is a transhumanist um, science fiction game, so it takes a lot of stuff. I mean, there's there's space space spacecraft of uh, all sorts. There's rules for creating planetary systems. Um, it's just uh, the amount of detail in this book is phenomenal. And um, as I've been saying about it, that, uh, honestly, I think that uh, Mindjammer is going to become sort of the, the high water mark for uh, Fate Core third-party publishers. Um, the, um, the attention to detail the uh, quality of the book itself, the illustrations are really good, the graphic design is, is good, it's, um, it's got a, a really cool futuristic sci-fi look to it, but at the same time, it is still um, readable. So, um, very good book. I highly recommend checking it out if you're a fan of, um, well, Fate Core. Um, if you're into transhumanist science fiction, or really any sort of science fiction at all, because um, while its baseline is transhuman stuff, really you can use 
uh, mind jammer for just about any sort of, of science fiction. So, um, I would definitely suggest checking that out. Then dipping into the pile of smaller books, um, this is actually, I'm doing these, like I said, in no particular order, but um, this is the most recent um, uh, thing to appear. This is um, the Sorcerer books by, and like I said, I'm still getting used to working the camera, so the Sorcerer books by uh, Ron Edwards, um, also uh, funded by a recent Kickstarter. We have the annotated uh, core book, which is a really interesting uh, method. Basically, what he did was he took the existing uh, core rules for the game, and rather than, you know, doing a new edition, he um, annotated them. Um, he's got very extensive notes talking about what he was thinking, um, you know, what uh, some of the things that have come up in the game since its an initial publication. It's, it's a really uh, interesting way to do it. Um, and then the other book is uh, the supplements, which are um, uh, Sorcerer and Sword, The Sorcerer's Soul, and Sex and Sorcery. Um, let's see. Also coming through in the stack of little books, um, this was actually um, from a Indiegogo campaign that I backed for OpenQuest, which is a... Um, sort of a RuneQuest retro clone. It takes the material from um, the, uh, the open mongoose uh, RuneQuest SR SRDs and turns them into sort of a... It's kind of like second edition RuneQuest, kind of like third edition RuneQuest, kind of a little bit like the old Chaosium Stormbringer. Um, this book, however, uh, as you can tell, is rather small. This is the basic uh, open quest, and um, it doesn't have as much of the fancy stuff that's in the full rules, but, you know, it gives you really everything you need to play, and um, you can you can make a really good variety of, of characters um, just using this. Um, open quest basic is supposed to be available at some point in July. I don't remember what the exact date was. I, I'm thinking mid-month. Um, I got it because, you know, being a, a backer of, the, of the, the crowdfunding campaign. But when it does come out, I really recommend uh, picking it up. If you are looking for a fantasy game that's, you know, something not D&D, &D, um, it's, it's nice. It's attribute-based, um, skill-based. There are no classes, no levels. Um, everything is uh, revolves around percentiles. For those who don't know, um, and um, it, it, it's a really good book. Um, I really enjoyed the first edition of Open Quest, and um, I've enjoyed the second edition stuff that I've been getting through um, being the backer of the the campaign. So it's really good, and I um, I recommend checking it out. Um, next up, and I really haven't had as much of a chance to read this as I would like, um, this is from Heroic Journey Publishing. This is Chris Perrin's Mecha. Really cool uh, cover illustration of a badass Mecha and uh, shine from my computer monitor. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I haven't really completely read this yet, but I really enjoy what I have read. Um, it is a nice, simple game. Um, I never thought I would say this, but someone managed to make a game that is um, simpler than Big Eyes, Small Mouths, and it is in a good way. So, um, obviously, not everyone is going to be interested in something like this, but if you like your games on the uh, lighter side, and I know I do, um, something like this is is really good. I'm I'm really looking forward to digging into it and uh, you know getting back and and uh, uh, figuring out the system for a fuller review at some point. And then, um, last but not least, in the pile of of stuff um, here at the the Dorkman offices, I have two books from uh, Johnstone Metzger. I really should practice these things before I go and start recording. Um, 
these are pretty cool. It is Dungeon Adventures on a Dungeon Planet. I swear I will figure out how to work the hold things up to the camera. And what I think has to be the best name for a module ever, Evil Wizards in a Cave. Um, both of these are primarily, well, uh, Adventures on a Dungeon Planet is a supplement for Dungeon World. Um, this goes into more of a sort of a golden age science fiction, science fantasy kind of background using the, the Dungeon World rules. Um, Evil Wizards in a Cave is a dual statted thing. It's, it's an adventure module. It is for Dungeon World. And it is also for Labyrinth Lord, which means you can pretty much convert it into any D&D-ish um, game. Um, these are both really cool. I like the illustrations. It's, you know, um, they lean on the, the public domain art for stuff, but it, it suits the, the, both of the books really well. And, um, you know, I just... Um, I, I, I like them. I'm, I haven't gotten through both of those yet either, and I am looking forward to that. Um, sorry, looking aside, a uh, ambulance is driving by outside as I'm doing this. So, um, what else is going on in the land of uh, dork of dorks? I guess would be the best way to call us. Um, I have. Um, I opened up a t-shirt shop that I'm going to have goofy little uh, t-shirts and things that uh, will make a, a nominal profit for the blog. Um, and I will have the link for that down at the bottom of the screen. Um, there is also a fundraiser campaign going on to help um, defray some of the costs for going to Gen Con and covering it both for the blog and for uh, Bleeding Cool, who, for whom I uh, write about uh, tabletop gaming. And, of course, another ambulance. Um, and if you've ever been to a con before, you know that it's not cheap to do. And um, so what I'd like, basically like if um, you viewers and listeners and uh, readers of the blog would be interested is, you know, just um, a dollar or two at... At, you know, the minimum, just help out and uh, help me bring some of the best coverage of, of Gen Con to you guys that I possibly can. And I think that about covers it for this video blog. Um, these things are going to be fairly informal, much like the Geeky Voices Carry podcast, which I will be recording later tonight. And um, if you have any questions, comments, you can put them down below in the comments section of the video, and um, I will do my best to address them in as quick of a manner as possible, and as I said before, any relevant links I will put down in the, uh, in the text below. Thank you for listening, have a good night, have good gaming, and thank you for watching my YouTube channel and for reading the Dorkland blog.